Right, we're now off to Grand Pound, Creed, down in Cornwall in 2007, looking for any evidence of Zara's ancestors, which were located in these places from censuses and parish records. But it's always better to go and visit the place, isn't it? To have a look round, to get a feel of the place. And um, I can still remember that now. It's 2013 now. Back to 2007. And here we go. Right, I'm at a place called Grand Pound on the main Truro Road. It's an ancient village, apparently. I can't find anywhere to park. So that could be a car park over there. I'll go and have a look. Right, that's handy. It's, um, I parked down the side street. Um, Creed is the main big church. And... There's a small church here, so I'm just going to have a quick look at. But Creed is a place that holds the the graveyard and everything. But I've got to go up to the post office at the top of this hill to uh, locate, get a, another film. It's a long village on the main road. You've got the Dolphin Inn pub. You've got uh, the clock tower. I don't know what significance that is. And behind that, you've got the church. <coughs> and beyond that, on the top of the hill, there's the post office. Um, so I'll be coming back up this way and turning right in a minute, in my van. That's a lot of toilets down the bottom there, so that's handy. Yeah, the turn into Creed is just before the clock tower, and it's one mile. But I'll drive there. You think that Zara's ancestry, they all lived around these little villages. There's a clock tower, it says, This clock was presented by Grand Pound, or two Grand Pound, by the Reverend C.H.G. and Mrs. Vivian of Creed Rectory in 1894. And the church, the little church, <laughs> is called St. Nun's Church. It's a small one right in the centre of the village. Don't know if it's open, I'll go and have a look. It's a little tiny church. It's almost like a little Catholic church, actually. Favourably, I reckon. Uh, 
to go up to Creed now. Right, it's ten past eleven on the 4th of October 2007 and I've arrived at Creed Church. And it's very difficult parking. I don't know whether you can open the gates or what. Um, but I've just had to park. It's very narrow roads and the roads around here are only wide for one car. So I hope it's alright where I've parked. Too bad. Right, if you're coming through the main gate, I mean, I, the only other way around it would be for me to drive in. I don't know if you're allowed. Um, that'd be the only other alternative, wouldn't it? Well, I'll leave it like that for now. I can always move. Anyway, from the entrance, you can't really see the church much. Right, I'm just trying to find out what it's called. I didn't see a name. It's just Creed Church, I suppose. In the porchway. I'm just going to see if this one's open. Yeah, this one's open as well. Oh, musky smell. Oh, that's interesting. Guide to the churches. Right, looking at the list of incumbents, Rectory of Creed. See if we recognise might be an Isaacson on there for all we know, he might have come down this far. William Gregor, 1761 to 1817, Rector of Creed and Discoverer of Titanium. Oh. He was born in 1761, Christmas Day, younger son of Captain Francis Gregor, an army officer under General Wolfe at the capture of Quebec. He went to Bristol Grammar School, then he went to St. John's College, Cambridge in 1780. Mm, I've got a little thing on there. His father purchased a rectory at Dipford near Totnes in Cornwall. Mm. And we've got some samples here of the uh, titanium dioxide. It's a whole little history all about the titanium. There you go. Now in here we've got uh, this creed for some sort of a family were married, buried. You've got the old um, coffin cart here. Doesn't look like it's been used for a while. Uh, simple in some ways. A lot of pews missing. Look like school chairs. There's a little stairway up into the belfry here. Tower's locked. Our Father which art in heaven. Oh yeah, that's a great big prayer there. You can see out the window as well. Hmm, let's take a picture. Yeah, it's a nice view out the window. Some graves at the back there. Um, let's go to the tower there, which is locked. in many ways. And there's a little place down there to the back door. We've got a great big thing on the wall, sort of painting type thing of um, two lions and a crown and everything.
Just having a look on some of the plaques. Yes. I put some money in the box. Right, just leaving the church bed now. Put the leaflets back in the van. Shut the big old door. Yeah, running through the uh, graveyard, there's um, a pathway. So obviously there's a nature walk around the, <laughs> through the church. I'm, just at, I'm going in our usual clockwise direction. Following the path a minute just to see where it goes for a while. Like I did in the other church. I imagine this just goes off and leads into fields and things. I've been like I am nosy, I'll have a little look. Yeah, there's a little pathway. Then you come to a gate. There's some cows in the field behind the church. And then there's a, a trail. Leading off. So if I lived round here, I'd be exploring all this sort of thing. Same in Suffolk. They had lots of walks. Never got round to it. So I thought we were staying there. This is like um, replacement therapy doing Zara's tree down here, really. I do miss the stuff I was doing up there. Because where I am, there ain't no... In Western, there ain't no family. At the back of the church, there's, you know, about ten or so graves under the name Crow Goggin. C R O G G O N. With memorials, and it's like a whole patch that belonged to them. It's at the back of the church behind the tower. Obviously, signs that there were graves that aren't there anymore. Oh, it's just been sort of flung over the back of a log there. Yeah, someone's done a bit of strimming, but it's a bit untidy. I've got to be careful. I'm standing on a vault at the side of the church. Um, John Hawkins died in 1736, age 45. This is uh, two big slabs lying flat and they're on top of like a great big huge square base which is possibly an old vault underneath. Um, and there's another Philip Hawkins as well, These aren't very clear, who died 31st or something. 17, it's either 38 or 88. I don't quite, can't quite see how old this person was. Yeah, there's a little bit of scruffy church. It's weird they got this big church out here, where some um, grand pound up the road where I've just come from. It's like more of the ancient big village. This is like a couple of houses and a big church and nothing else, nothing literally about three or four houses. There is a mix of old and new graves, mainly old ones. But they're very sparse now. There's lots of patches where there were graves. But not anymore. I'm back at the front now. I'm about to run out of tape. This couldn't have been a very long tape. I'm going to do the front part of the church now. Sunny day. Let's go and get another bit of tape because this one's about to run out. 
Turn the tape over a moment. Wait a minute, it takes two seconds. Find a barbary. This is a new tape. This is uh, Creed, October 2007, visit to Cornwall. It's part of this story will be on um, the other tape. So I'm in Creed. It's doing a bit of grave looking. See if I can find a Barbary. There's Hawkins and Lug. And there's also a Thomas Henry. There's Bennett's and Scholars here. More Bennett's, more Bennett's. I've also noticed at the front of the cemetery on the front wall, which backs onto the road, standing up on end are all the stones that have obviously been removed. In fact, they lie all the way around the cemetery. Um, so I'll be having a cook. I've got all them to do as well, but I'm going to do all the standing up ones first. At least they've kept the stones, even if they haven't got the... they aren't in their original places. They've obviously lined them all up. stretch here I'll just do of the ones propped up against the wall. There's um, Seacombe with two C's in it. Krogan. Kerwin. Let's just get names. Turners. Some of them you can't read. They're very covered in moss now because they're leaning up near the trees. So they're not very readable, especially the soft stone type. Um, Alan, yeah, they're not very, some of them are completely covered up with moss now, so though they're preserved, if there's a Barbary here, if it's not a slate one, I won't find it. Right, that's a little stretch of them, but almost impossible to read them. Any of those tuckers here? And a whole row of Devonshire people. They're called Devonshire. Hannah, Joseph, Charles, William, John, Mary, Elizabeth, William, Dorothy, Alfred, Thomas. A whole load of Devonshires. See, I got this feeling that the Barbary sort of married people in these places. But they were really from somewhere else. And there weren't that many of them. This is my theory. And they hung around this area. But they were and they come from somewhere completely different. So in that big chunk there, I couldn't find any. And then there's the new lot. There's a few more old ones. I'm just looking at so any new ones because something might turn up. I'm now going to do look at try and see if I can see any writing on any of these going around the wall, but it doesn't look at all likely. They've either covered in moss or they've there's right they've been carved out of like white sandstone and it's like looking at a negative. It's really difficult to see any names. Right, there is a miners in here, because I've got a feeling it's either miner or miners. It's one of the, this could be Hannah Miner, who married a Peter Barbary. I can't remember where, but uh, there's a John Miners who died in 1936, age 80, and Levina Ann, his wife, who died in 1940, age 87, and George James and Leonard 
Percy, two dear infant sons. So that's a minors. So if I see minors, I might. I'm sure there's minors somewhere else, but I'll just put that one down because it's cr Creek. Creed, I mean. It's not looking very good finding any, but like I said, there are half the stones in here or unreadable. Right, well, Bill around the graveyard. If they are here, they're, the, they're not upright and they're not visible. Um, which means they'll be either propped up against the wall somewhere, because they've got loads of them propped up, or they haven't got a stone. I think in those days, most people seem to have a stone in the countryside. It's not like London, where they just put them in square 39 and left them there. Oh, well, we've been to Creed. We're getting there, aren't we? Look at the road from the graveyard. I think there's a great big mansion. Could be the old vicarage even. But uh, I won't venture up there. It's palatial, lots of grounds. Right, off to Ladcock now. Right, while I was still at Creed, I've. Well, I'm still there. I've just had a nice cheese roll and a nice cup of coffee. While I can, somewhere to park and everything. Looking out at Creed Graveyard. Everyone's standing upright, amongst people. It's a old chuffinch picking up one of the tall stones at the moss. Mm. Right, I found Probus. Right, that's the end of the visit to Creed. And I'll be going on to Probus on the next part of the visit to Cornwall, which I'm putting into audio pods now from cassette tapes, which are getting more and more frail with time, <coughs> so they need to be digitalised. Um, they have already been transferred onto Ancestry.com under appropriate members of the Zara's family, and um, and all my tapes that I've done for my own family as well I've tried to put them under certain people um, but they all need to be put on disc now under audio music it comes under and then you can use that file to add to other things um, like I hope to put photos to um, the audio as well to make that more interesting so that's something I've already started to do Okay, so over and out for now. This is Sheila in 2013, looking back at 2007 during the visits to Cornwall. And I haven't been back down there since, and I've got lots to do down there. So, uh, over and out.